your grand final memories, yes. MG. When when you think back to 91, as you would have had plenty of opportunity to do this week, mm. what, what springs to mind straight away? Uh, euphoria is the first word that I can think of. I think um, after having such heartache in 1990, when I used to grow up watching all the players play a grand final and then basically even, even guys in retirement, and they'd sit there after a grand final or, or in retirement and then they just ball, ball their eyes out. <laughs> And I said, I'm never going to be one of them blokes. You know, come on, it's only a game. But well, there I was in 90, that was me. I was on the field in tears. You don't know why you're crying it's because you, you can't stop it. I did the same when I retired, but maybe I'm just a, I'm just a sook. I don't know. <laughs> um, but 91 was different because we, the four of us went away on the kangaroo tour. Um, we come back and we'd seen these guys this, look, would intimidate us. The Raiders, the Broncos, uh, the Tigers. We saw all them players on a, on a different level uh, on camp, uh, in, like three month camp in, in Origin. I uh, sorry for Kangaroo Tour, you know the Blockers and the Ciros and the Lazaruses and the Laurie Dalys and the Ricky Stewarts and the Walters boys and Alfie and they're all characters and they lo- they love their family and they miss home. Um, so we come back with a bit of a spring in our step from the Kangaroo Tour, and we changed our jerseys from the Chocolate Soldiers to the Licorice All Sorts, and we lost three games all year. Um, and then the Grand Final come around and. At uh, half time, they were beating us again. Same team, twelve six. Mm. Uh, and then Royce jumped up and, and gave a really impassioned plea about, "Don't let this be my last memory of rugby league." Um, and then Gus ramped it up even more, saying, "You don't, don't you dare leave this guy like this." And so, uh, we went in the second half. I got Simbin. I went, "That's there's the grand final gone. I just lost the grand final for my team." And um, I, I when I watched the game back, I just didn't realize how hard our forward pack without me defended. And I, when I come in with about 20 minutes to go off the Simbin, um, I just saw the lift in my, in my players, my teammates. They just went, wow, he come, he's back, he's fresh. So I start doing something, you know. And um, and then the, the, my my memory of the 91 grand final is when I saw Scott Gale doing a short dropout. I've charged onto the ball and I, th- I thought I was just going to dive on the ball and and lock it up because mm. it's 13-12 at this stage. Um, but it just bounced up in my hands and I thought, oh, I'm going to score. But I didn't. I was, um, <laughs> Mount Manigle was back there like he was for most of the second half, you know, defending try. So uh, then I heard, MG, MG. I looked around and Royce is sprinting with his little arms and he, I give it to him. And when he put that ball down the corner, he jumped up. When he jumped up, I saw his face and he was crying straight away. So I've gone, ah! like I've, I've, just, I've, I've, I've yelled the loudest I've ever yelled in my life and my larynx fractured. <laughs> After, really fractured after going and going <laughs> for two weeks I couldn't talk because of the the emotion and it was about three minutes to go so Brandy had to kick the goal from the sideline to put it out of doubt mm. and he did mm. he was kicking about sixty percent that year yeah. <laughs> he once, uh, mm-hmm. so it was meant to be but that that my memory goes straight back to that time when Roy Simmons puts the ball down the corner and you realise a childhood dream incredible eighteen years oh, since no. your own grand final success mm. Kurtz yeah what jumps to mind. Uh, most of mine's post, um, walking over after we'd won it, walking over to see family and friends were in a certain bay, um, in the, I think it was like the, the southeastern corner of ANZ stadium or stadium Australia. Um, and everyone just surged towards the, the ground and the fence fell down and all the fans <laughs> fell onto the ground and I, I didn't get to, and because of that security ran out, it was a bit, it's just, the scenes are crazy. So not not really um, getting to see him at that point, but sort of acknowledging them. And then uh, in the sheds after the game, when all the, um, just the group sits together with the trophy in the middle, some vivid memories yeah, about, yeah, about those moments, yeah. you know, intently, I think because I was at the back end of my career, I was too, I retired a year later. So um, savoring all of that, 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 um, that part. And then one of the other great ones was just, um, we knew that, you know, the, the whole community had lined, my, um, not just Mulgoa road, but the M4 on the way to the game. So going home on the bus, I remember sitting next to Reese Wesser and we had the trophy sort of in between us and we we're just having a bit of a cuddle and a beer. <laughs> um, and I think that's when it really started to sink in what we just achieved. Mm. Uh, so me and West just sitting there, then walking into the club and having just, you know, tens of thousands of people there. It's midnight by this time, by the time you get back there and having that whole place just jumping, it was just like some sort of rave concert. <laughs> And then finally they separated us from, from the fans and then went up and then finally got to see uh, family and friends in this little area where they just had some food and that for us, which would be the last time we ate for a couple of days because it was just 
all, all party out, out and after that. Uh, and then just the first time you get to share that moment with the people that have been through that journey with yeah. you uh, intently. I remember hugging the old man and what it meant to him and the tears and uh, my brother and my parents and all. Yeah, it was um, those, those things are what I take out of it mainly. Sharing wow. it with the community and sharing it with the people that mean the most. And, wow. that, and that's what kind of, we, we're lucky because we're both on in the media. So we get the, the chance to tell other people how good it was. Mm. Other guys who have won the comp feel exactly the same as us. Yeah. We, mm. we talk about it because we can. Mm. But everyone who wins a comp has, has the best memory of their life because they do it with their best mates. Yeah. And, yeah. and they, they, you know how, like through that year, you've gone through adversity. You've gone through ups and downs. You've been, you know, in, in and out of form. You've, you've been injured. And then they finally... Yeah, been last it, game of the year and win it. It's so so good. It's what separates. So MG played at three or four different clubs, um, and I, I bet every time he thinks about football, the first thing he goes back to is mm. the grand final. And it's the same for me. Whether it's you know some nice rep moments that we've all been lucky enough to to share from a personal perspective, but when someone brings up the game, mm. straight away you go back to. The, the guys that you shared that moment with that you take away forever, forever, regardless of what else you've done or what other clubs that you've been at, you win a grand final with a group and a club, that's for life.